hey guys, I wanted to go over five tips that I think are great things to carry with you to a wedding or really, honestly, any shoot. Uh, this is kind of stuff that really applies to most any kind of photography, uh, not only um, weddings, but more portraits and family sessions and stuff like that. You'll learn something, hopefully. So stick with me. Uh, here's five tips of what I think are just some essentials that I've, that I've picked up over the past couple of years. Number one, uh, it's pretty simple, uh, but when I was starting in my career, uh, and mainly that was shooting weddings, I found that I didn't shoot a lot of details. And if I did shoot details of the day, they kind of sucked. And usually it was something like a picture of their ring. Or I, you know, I used to be pretty, pretty, pretty adamant about grabbing their rings and doing a lot of ring shots and doing a lot of macro ring stuff. And I don't really do much of that in, these days, but I have been focusing a lot on detail. I think detail is very important in, in weddings. Currently, I'm planning my own wedding. And so, of course, we have so many things that we bring to the wedding. So many, it just, it's a lot of planning. It's a lot of everything, resources, money. And so you want, you want stuff to be remembered. And in this case, uh, that's going to be details. So flowers, uh, arrangements, stuff like that, just whatever they bring to the wedding. So that's number one. It's pretty simple details. Uh, this is an example. I'm going to kind of show you a bunch of examples from one wedding that I had this year. Uh, awesome couple. They were fun. She had some beautiful details. And this is one of them. This was, of course, just her bouquet. And now when I start shooting, I realize that I notice um, things while I'm shooting, like these kind of detail shots that I normally hadn't before. So right before this, we were just taking photos, of course, of the couple behind her is her husband. Um, but in the midst of shooting them, I realized like, wow, this is awesome light. I'm really loving how her bouquet looks. So I'm going to squeeze in real quick, a little closer and snag a couple shots of that as a detail. And that stuff kind of throughout the day turns into just a lot of awesome detail shots. But you got to get it in the moment. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard to re replan just grabbing her and, and taking her to a window just for a detail shot. It's kind of nice to just do it when you're in the moment. You know, and so this is one of them. Just kind of a cool, awesome bouquet. Beautiful. Just look at that. If it loads, of course. But yeah, you get the hint. Awesome stuff. Some eucalyptus. That's been big. Uh, small things like this. This is not anything fancy. Kind of just a silly shot. But I think we were out, you know, shooting photos of the whole group. And I saw some of these weird flowers while they were all getting situated or something. Take a couple shots. Uh, give that to them in their wedding set and it's just kind of again just details of the day that they might have missed or maybe that they want to have who knows here's another one of bouquet uh, you could see that before this i was shooting a close-up of 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 them um i was just a photo of them too and again i realized this is awesome light let's take a photo of this bouquet kind of same thing here they're in a pose but again kind of like the okay in this light a little harsher backlighting just beautiful amazing stuff same thing like this this is uh, inside the venue these are some details that they brought i think they hung this chandelier so it's kind of just one of those things take some photos of it i was shooting at 1.4 on the 50 millimeter and sometimes for detail shots i go pretty crazy in my aperture just get really um a lot of depth of field and such but you know play with it have fun Closer one of that, just stuff, you know, again, this might mean something to the couple. We don't, as photographers, really know. There might be something from their grandmother, who knows. So taking stuff like this, you never know. It could be one shot that they're like, oh my gosh, I really, really wanted that. How did you know? Uh, detail stuff of their uh, table. Uh, this is kind of just a weird shot of their, their uh, main table, head table. And some center arrangement. So... You know, you get the you get the point, but of course, uh, detail shots are really important. I think, and couples love them. I do a lot of my details when we are done taking all the portraits, and right before the ceremony starts, if I have time, I'll go jet over to the reception if it's set up, and just kind of take all a lot of shots. And then during the the uh, actual reception, I'll make sure to take a lot more once there's people in there and all that kind of stuff. So, number one was details. Number two is window light utilize that beautiful window light and um this could mean of course you know a lot of things but i i tend to stick my couples in window light if if i have it if we're inside of course and so that could look like a lot of things in this case 
uh, we were in this old mill. It was an old wool mill. And to the left of all these folks right here, these two folks, there wasn't much light. It was kind of dull. It was kind of boring. It was pretty cool in there. But, you know, I wanted to do something more with more, with more life and more character. So I stuck him in front of the window. This is for their first look. Uh, this isn't a photo that I had posed them like this. <laughs> it would be kind of odd. Uh, but this was her walking up on their first look. And so he's, of course, anxious and did exactly what I wanted. Looked out the windows. Awesome. But uh, yeah, you utilize that window light. Window light is beautiful indoors, especially if there's not a lot of na light inside of there, a lot of artificial light. The only thing that was in here was were these lights up here. But again, that's so dark that it actually kind of adds to the photo. It's kind of cool. But if there was photos overhead that were uh, fighting with the outside light, I would say uh, it, it's hard. It's, you know, black and white. When in doubt, black and white. Put it in black and white. Uh, but yeah, this is window light. I love window light. This, again, same thing. This is right after they saw each other for the first time. I believe this was my second shooter who shot this photo. Or me, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, this window light is beautiful. It's It's just, it's the best light. Same thing. Right after they saw each other, uh, I just moved them right right next to that window, and all this light on their face is all window light, and uh, it's it's just it's gorgeous light. It's very soft, and of course you can see here this is where that one bouquet photo I showed you before came from. Just this awesome window light coming in, and I realized, whoa, look at that bouquet. Pretty simple stuff. Here you can see me shooting that photo. Um, yeah, they're really jammed up next to that window. There was not much sun shooting through it, but just a lot of beautiful, soft, bright light. Um, and again, if you stick couples in front of that light, it's just, it's it's awesome. When in doubt, go to the window light. Uh, here's the last one, just of her in front of the window. You can just see it's just on her right side of her body, just that awesome glow of light uh, from the window. It's very soft. It's very, very clean. This is the kind of light that we wish we could get in the studio every time we're shooting, you know? It's awesome. So yeah, number two was window light. Number three is focus on some close-ups. Yeah, close-up of the heads, close-up of them. Uh, this is kind of something that I, a little pose I like to throw people in a lot uh, when I am forgetting or you know I'm trying to remember, put them in a pose or do something. This is a great fallback for me. I love getting couples really close and intimate. Uh, and this is kind of one of them. I think... I don't know why, but I really love photos where, um, for the wedding couples, or just any couple in general, where their heads are touching. I don't know why I do, but I'm not a big fan sometimes when you're really close to somebody and the heads aren't touching. Because when they do touch, sometimes, I don't know, it just seems like there's more of a connection, uh, and I like it. So this one is um, uh, close heads, you know, getting getting heads close and, and shooting stuff close. And of course, this rule doesn't apply to just close-ups, but... Um, heads touching. It's an awesome thing. I don't know what it is about it, but no, no it's something nice. Intimate. It's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, number four, I'm going to cut to it real quick, is shooting up from a high spot. So this, these ones were shot from me standing on a bench that happened to be there. And it creates a really just an intimate, awesome look looking down on the couple. Um, yeah, I don't know. Of course, I, I've seen some photographers go to weddings with little step ladders and all the power to them. Unfortunately, I, I don't think I would carry a step ladder. So when you get an opportunity, like maybe a bench, uh, jump up on there and shoot some stuff from up there. I don't know. It looks, you know, it's fun stuff. Simple stuff, guys. Simple, simple stuff. Same thing right here. Heads touching, getting all intimate, shooting from a little bit higher. Uh, this is a great method too, if you happen to be a little short. Same thing with the heads. Heads are really close. A uh, little bit more intimate, a little bit close. I don't know. It's just, it's nice. Uh, I think on this photo, the first one, she was probably pulled away a little bit and I didn't like it as much. So I told her, hey, head a little closer, get them touching. And I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. So that was three and four close heads. Get the heads close. And then number four was shoot from up high. Last one, number five is get some different angles. Uh, something that I really fall into on, on almost every shoot is when I'm posing a couple, I never think to try a different angle where they're not looking at the camera, where they might just be like hanging out and um, getting close with each other. This is something where my second shooter, which in this case happens to be my fiance, uh, was shooting photos 
behind me and finding cool angles. And I saw this one and I just like, I loved it. This one and the next one. I love this photo. It's just something about it. It's like, whoa, that compared to my angle is just so different. Uh, so she reminded me, of course, you know, try different angles. Don't get stuck with them looking in the camera all the time. Move around, let them stay where they are. And the thing that's cool is if you move 180 degrees or less, the light's going to change. So if you don't like your light where you're at, move around, see what happens. Uh, here's another one she got from straight up right behind them. And, and I loved it. It was just what a cool angle um, and an awesome old church. And so, yeah, that's number five. Try some different angles. Get creative. Don't get stuck. Uh, don't rush a wedding day. Don't rush a portrait shoot. Just enjoy the time. Have fun. Uh, don't move around five million times. Find a spot with some beautiful light and uh, stay. Shoot it. Have some good times and create some just awesome photos. So that was five quick tips. Maybe quick. I don't know. It's probably been like 20 minutes already. Hope you guys liked it. If you do, check out the old website, davidjamesvisuals.com. If you are not subscribed yet, man, hit that button right below. Uh, I've been posting a lot of videos lately. I got some awesome stuff coming up this winter. I got a shoot I'm doing where I'm going to be doing some tutorials, shooting a couple uh, out in the field. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. Again, if you liked it, hit the like button, the old thumbs up, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Till next time, have an awesome day.